I've dealt with um, finances, going from two incomes to one income. I went from, God, I jumped from one relationship to another in my youth, and then all of a sudden was married. And then I was divorced and Dr. Paul Osteen challenged me not to date for three years. And I had never been alone. So I learned to be okay with myself. I was married 13 years. And it was part of why Dr. Paul said, don't date for three years. So now some of you that have been married a really long time, you know, there's a, a point this doesn't work, but uh, he has kind of a rule of thumb that for every, every four years you were married, don't date for a year. So four, eight, 12, it was three years. And the reason he says that is the longer you're with somebody, the more uh, connected routine, history, all that, that you have, and you need time to unravel that. Now, some of you may, and it's admirable to be married, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. And, um, and so like my dad, when my mom died after they were married 60 years, jumped into a relationship with a woman at the retirement home and, uh, you know, more power to him, you know, it's like, okay. So everything I'm saying can change situationally. How you spend that time, I think really matters. Um, uh, I was lonely and I didn't want to watch a lot of TV, I, but I just decided to be okay being alone. And I just embraced it. I would go for walks in nature. I couldn't afford to do a lot. And so something neat birthed out of that time. You know, I started seeking after God. I started doing devotional and reading the Bible. And one of my good friends, his name's Eric Lucetta. He's one of the teachers now of the Monday Night Bible Studies. Well, all that birthed out of my divorce. And so Eric and I started talking. He would pray with me every day. So having friends you could pray with. And so we started doing a, a Bible study at my house. We ended up having 60 people come to my Bible study at my house. He would teach. I would host. Um, sometimes we do potluck dinners, that kind of thing. It was really fun. When you're good, when you're stable, when you uh, are making good choices and decisions because you're grounded. So when you start your day with devotional time, what that does is set a tone for your day. And you, if you're like me and you're in the midst of this, you're a wreck. And so you don't want to go into this battlefield, kind of this spiritual battlefield, a wreck. And so by starting your day off with some coffee and Jesus, you know, by, um, you know, I always like to say this because not everybody knows this. And that is, you know, spending time reading the Bible, praying, doing all this is not just what good Christians do you're actually being changed. The Bible says that you're renewing your mind. You're being changed, transformed, becoming spiritually mature. And out of that comes the fruit of the spirit. And so if you want peace, get to know Jesus better. And then as you change, you're going to have more peace. Now I'll tell you guys this because it helped me so much. I was so anxious. I don't know if any of y'all have felt this as well, but my metal metabolism heated up so much. I lost like 30 pounds. I mean, I was super skinny. Um, I couldn't eat, didn't want to eat, you know, hmm. and it's not a diet plan I'd recommend, but I memorized Philippians four, six, and seven, another good scripture for you. But it says, be anxious for nothing, but in all things through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make every request be known unto God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And 
I just started every time I felt anxious. And Shatira, it was a lot at first. And I'm feeling hot and everything. I started speaking that out by faith and just speaking it out. And it didn't change overnight. But there came a point where I just experienced that peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And now I hardly ever get anxious. And anytime I even start, I know right where to go. And I said, God, you say be anxious for nothing, you know, and I just calm down and I take a deep breath and I sleep on things and I don't get worked up the way I used to get worked up about things and that husband or wife, when they call and you get all anxious and you know, they, they ruin your night or your weekend or whatever it is, or they're working through your kids to get your nerves, you know, I know what it's like, you know, it's yeah. like, keep your peace. You know, you set the tone and by seeking God and memorizing scriptures, speaking those out, doing all that, you know, and I know that you may not be a, a place yet to where oh man, that doesn't even sound realistic. Just start doing it. You know, like tomorrow, wake up, have some coffee, read a little Bible verse, Matthew 6, and just kind of meditate on it. Speak it out because there's power in our words and you just keep doing it day after day. And next thing you know, you're like, man, I'm not struggling like I was. And the three years gave me room to have an opportunity if she did want to come back because I wasn't in another relationship. So if you do want or would like to reconcile or you're trying to figure that out, just give it time. You know, who knows? It may work out. It may not. You can't force them, you know, and you may not be able to force your feelings, you know, and, and maybe there's too much water under the bridge and it's hard to, and if they're not willing to go to count, I mean, there's so many factors to that, you know, Shatira, but, um, but I just kept working on myself to get me whole. Then I got to a place that I was whole. And then I was actually, when I met Laura, I was like, Hey, you know, I, <laughs> I was excited about that, you know, and, because it's so hard, but you got to. Um, and I think Laura being the way she is just helped a ton and we took it very slowly. I'll tell you this too, uh, let me throw this out Shatira because I think it's so important. I've done it the wrong way and I've done it now the right way. Laura, believe it or not, waited seven years for us to be intimate. Mm. And that means I waited too. It was so different. Uh, there is a blessing that comes along with it. And so I would say this, don't shortchange the process. You know, whether it's sleeping around or whether it is waiting for the right mate or, you know, whatever that is. But I, before I met Laura, I just felt this peace I hadn't had before. So what I tell you is no matter what you're going through, know that there's hope on the other side. This is a season and that keep those dreams out there. I'd say in addition to setting the tone of your life also as much as you can, also um, have some goals, some dreams that you want to accomplish.